Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI as a Russia. Right, we just finished Ancient Walls over here in Zach Harvey, and I think our main goal this episode is to finish conservation, get all of our walls up. Because if you remember, at conservation, you can see here, you receive tourism from walls as the final piece of text. What that means is, as we build walls, um, there are three tiers of walls. You have ancient walls. This provides one tourism after advancing to the conser conservation civic. Then you can get to, I believe, med medieval walls, which gives two tourism after advancing to conservation. And then finally, renaissance walls gives you three. So that is six tourism per city. Uh, that's on par with... I would say it's on par with great works of writing. It's on par with a wonder uh, in terms of production efficiency. You can see here the Colosseum cost me a few hundred production uh, and it's generating me about five tourism per turn. So within the same ballpark, it's not quite as good, uh, but it is in that ballpark. Like the Mahabodhi Temple is generating five, the Kilwa Kisawani is generating four. Yeah, we're, we're heading in the right direction. And part of the preparation for that is going to be the prepping of land by chopping and destroying and, you know, just general prep. Let's teleport Shakespeare over to Cameron Holder so we can put the great work in there. You're in position, ready and waiting. We've already created a great work of music. We definitely need more places for those. Um, we had meant to upgrade these two guys to trebuchets, but we actually forgot. So we kind of built them for no reason. I guess technically there's no such thing as building something for no reason because we can always find a use for them. But they don't, they didn't serve their purpose. They were kind of a waste, but not an entire waste. We've already created a great work uh, over here. So let's go down to Zach Harvey, I believe. Wait, let's double check. Yeah, we're going to go down to Wesley Clausen. Oh, that's, sorry. Wesley Clausen is where we need to make it. So we're going to make a great work of art here. Perfect. Uh, we're probably getting closer to being able to theme some of these great works of art, but not quite. I would love to build the Hermitage and the Bolshoi Theatre, the Zebetage. Now, what does Broadway need? Just needs to be adjacent to a theatre square owned by the city. I actually don't have enough tiles for that. So if it's between Bolshoi Theatre and the Hermitage, I think I'm going to go for the Hermitage. While you do get the two randomly chosen free civics, the fact that this gives eight great works of art slots in the capital, and then I can also go into Broadway. I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go workshop into medieval walls, into Renaissance walls, into other stuff, which I think means I'm going to take, I'm going to look to take Susan to Johannesburg so that I can get that 15% production boost in the capital, which will shorten the amount of turns it'll take to build that. Ultimate focus right now is getting immediate tourism. The sooner I get tourism, the better. And so focusing on building my walls is the play. Uh, I'll chop out that builder. I'll overflow, I'll overflow into a um, wall. And I want to be getting most of my builders out of Brandon Tate. I will actually be spending most of my gold on builders during this era, especially in Brandon Tate, because it's slightly more efficient for me to do so. It is the current best use of my gold, in my opinion. And so that's what I'm going to use my gold for. We have education, University of saint -Cour. These aren't particularly important to our plan because they don't give much tourism. Um, we got Renaissance walls in Emi Castagne. We got the amphitheater in here too, which does give us more room for great works of writing, which we do need that room. I had a great writer all the way over here. I'm going to send him home to get turned into books. <laughs> That's what we do with great writers, right? We take them. We turn them into paste and uh, you flatten that paste, you turn it into, into writer pulp and that's how you get books. So I want you to go down to, is it Zach Harvey? Yeah, Zach Harvey needs another great work. So we'll pop down there and put it in there. You want to avoid barbs, ideally, because I think they can, they can try to condemn you sometimes, which is not a fun vibe for you, sir. One more turn until we get conservation, which is amazing. We'll be able to start planting so many trees. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful time in the Russian Empire in 820 AD. Well, I guess we'll, it'll be a little bit later next year, uh, next turn, I guess. Right, Michelangelo, build me a sculpture. We're up to 100 base tourism from Great Works, 122 tourism from cities. Conservation, we st should start to see that to jump again. Now, Georgia likes is better because we are building walls. There's conservation, plus two era score and we're up to 139 tourism per turn as well as we have banking very nice conservation is complete we now have access to the sanctuary as well as resource management and the all-important naturalist we're not going to quite get the naturalists yet not until we have finished building renaissance walls because i'm not uh, bu building renaissance walls and building builders i'm going to head towards mass media i would like broadway and potentially crystal red and tour if i could get both that would be amazing if i can get one i'd be happy so Renaissance walls in the capital, excellent. Uh, I'm going to put one, two, three, four envoys into Johannesburg to get control of that. That will get me a significant boost of production in the capital. It's 56 right now. If I boost that, it's 58. It should go higher if I put another envoy. 
58 and then if I click click yeah 72 production that should bring the hermitage down to a 21 turn build which is an extremely reasonable amount of time and let's begin the planting so plant a forest here plant a forest here plant a forest here plant a forest here Adam Daub should oh no I guess Brandon Tate the one who should own this natural park I can start deleting these pins as we get prepared for the uh, conversion so I just want you to think about the appeal in my empire as it currently stands so look how non-green a little bit of orange a little bit of red in there over the course of the next little while you're gonna see this completely shift from a sort of drab uninviting unremarkable terrain to a solid green color across the board. That is the goal. We have circumnavigated the earth, getting the earth getting its plus three era score, um, which is gonna be handy. If we can secure another golden age, I wouldn't complain, but it's not necessary. Okay, planting woods here. I wanna prioritize planting woods where it's gonna make a difference to at least either the tile that the national park is on or two tiles that are adjacent to national parks. So that's gonna be our prim primary goal right now. Like even look at the appeal in here, for example, this is like really just kind of okay, but we're slowly building it up. We could even fit a very nice seaside resort in here if we wanted to later. Another great work of riding, we're up to 150 tourism per turn, hoping to explode that soon. Renaissance walls are en route. Renaissance walls are en route. We finished the Renaissance walls in here, which means it's time to get builders. We do build them nice and quickly. By far the slowest part of the process of turning your empire into a beautiful national park. It's the, it's the builder part. It's the making the builders, moving them into position and doing it. So by prioritizing the builders now, in my current government, I get to squeak out a little bit of that extra value of the Renaissance walls while I'm building the builders. And then all on like a single turn, I can switch my government straight to reform church crank out a whole bunch of naturalists at a 15% discount. Now, 15% discount, by the way, if you do the math on it, um, it means that you get, I think it's, it's not 15% more. It's like slightly more than that. It's like 0.85 divided by one or one divided by 0.85 or something. Yeah, you actually get like 18% more national parks, which let's just call it, a, let's just call it roughly 20% more. The national parks do get more expensive. So let's call it, you get about 18% more faith value, uh, which is a big deal considering this is a limited resource, right? So efficiency is everything, right? Renaissance walls are complete. We could be building builders in here, um, but I think the hermitage would actually contribute pretty significantly to my win condition if I get it. So I'm going to go for it. It's not going to be a huge thing, but I just think I'm in a position to get it, right? Like I got 67 production, potential for production is high. Ooh, we did find Muscat. I'm going to put an Envoy in there because that'll be worth a decent amount of gold. So we're going to be breaking down a lot of old mining infrastructure and replacing it with all new forest infrastructure. So even just look here, look at this appeal. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's amazing, darling. Pop a forest into Wesley Clawson. Changing era in 10 turns. That might mean we want to switch now because we can... Well, actually, we kind of want a Dark Age because... We want to switch right after the era flips because we don't care about a golden age industrial era. What we really want is a golden age modern era because that's the era where I believe you can get the national parks boosted. So industrial era, we don't care about what kind of age we get. It's the modern era we care about. So we actually don't want to build any national parks until the industrial era triggers after the Renaissance era. It's not exactly true what I've just said, but it's you know, it's not what you want to do in almost every game, but in this particular game, it actually lines up in a really nice way to be advantageous for us, is basically what I'm saying. Okay, nationalism has been completed. We don't need it. We're going to grab Victor, and by it, I mean we don't need to combine our units together into armies. We're going to pop quick Victor in here so that we can get the... Basically, every city in my empire, well, seven of them, are being boosted by governors, which is a lot of amenities. Um, our amenities are about to go ham. Let's make sure we're selling off luxuries and also buying luxuries that is an important part of the game plan here because now we have nine out of nine cities at ecstatic happiness which does mean they should get a 20 percent boost to their product production from amenities uh 20 percent is huge by the way like it's gargantuan oh yeah look at that appeal starting to come in all right another great writer is in our hands not particularly important which great writer it is it just matters that we have him 
more forest going down, go ahead and grab us another builder. Um, Renaissance walls in here. None, McDob. We've got two envoys to spend. We could go to a higher level in Muscat. We don't actually have banks built, so I think only one level in Muscat makes sense. We'll harvest you. You're not particularly useful right now, but you will be someday, potentially, when I actually have room for your great works. Harvest that cattle. Totally on board to harvest cattle. Um, and I'm trying to get some good exploration done. I think I would, I've done a pretty good job exploring here. I don't think I'm going to find many more city-states that would be game-changing. Finding Chinguetti was huge. Finding it so late was painful, but I am glad I held on to all my envoys. Like a good player should always hold on to your envoys. I wasn't building any science infrastructure. None of these mattered to me until they did, and that's when I struck. That's when I grabbed them. And we're getting 18 influence per turn. Let's place the city's preserve right there. Keep working on those builders. I need to double check my open borders with people. Um, there's urbanization, so we do have access to neighborhoods. Neighborhoods can be an okay f way to turn production into tourism in the late game in the form of the shopping mall, which gives you plus four tourism, as well as amenities from entertainment. I would call it a pretty low priority. It's not super important for us. It's one of those things where it can be worth it, often isn't. Like the neighborhood is less production efficient than Renaissance walls. It's something you do if you have nothing better to do with your production. All right, five turns until we build all our national parks. Uh, Brandon Tate has reached 10 population. The only thing it's missing is a commercial hub, which would be nice, but we already have enough trade routes, so I'm just going to place it but I'm not actually going to build it. Instead, we're going to keep focusing on builders. More Renaissance walls have been finished. You haven't actually finished your theater square. Also could be a good city to drop a preserve in. Let's have a look and see if we have a spot where a preserve could fit nicely. Yeah, you know what? A preserve right here isn't too bad. Pop you right there. Uh, but I would much prefer to get the art museum. Renaissance walls in Gordon Abutnot, which means builders. Builders in Castagnie. We did run out of food in here which will make the city a little bit unhappier, but we're okay with that. Oh my God, look at that trade route. 25 gold from trading with Machad. More like Machad. Am I right? Huh? Am I right? Machad. Right, we're going to get rid of this uh, cattle tile to put a forest on there. It's more important to us. Will eventually become a lumber mill. Things of that nature. Okay, they killed my unit. I don't care um, about that. We basically got the exploration that we wanted. All right, forest. Double chop right there. We do want to keep chopping because even chopping now is production efficient because of the sheer number of builders that we can crank out from our cities. Hermitage is 13 turns away. Broadway's not far behind, honestly. Forest there, forest there. In, you're gonna... Wait, who owns that tile? I think I'll switch that to Cameron Holder for now because that would get me this art museum slightly faster. I will chop out that builder though just for the sake of it because I do need more build charges in the area. Another builder, please. We also actually should totally get the archaeologist out of that city because we haven't so current empire-wide project is to build our national parks industrialization just off finished so we get plus one production from mines from the few mines that we have we can also go for factories and coal power plants i think a builder in tula would be nice um, i think what i'm going to do here is gold purchase the factory That'll get us up over just a little bit over 100 production. And don't forget, this factory, actually, in terms of city overlap, hits, I believe, five cities. So this factory um, is currently producing me, in total, 15 production. And when I get the coal power plant, it'll be another 15. So this will be a 30 production factory, which is extremely efficient as a one-drop building, just for the sheer amount of stuff it provides. Plus, the small trickle of great engineer points could be really useful. I will grab J Jacob Fugger, who may have the funniest name in Civ 6. Okay, so industrialization is finished. We could jump to computers. It is seven techs away. I think we're going to chill slightly on that and instead have a little gander at what we could do. I think the thing to go for is flight because that'll turn all culture-related tourism or all culture-related tile improvements into tourism, rather. Okay, Adam Dobb is finished. It's finished what it was doing, and it was building Renaissance walls. I don't think this city really has the production to bother going, because it doesn't even have its art museum. So we'll go art museum first. I got four envoys to play around with, but nothing I want in here. I have everything I need. Chinguetti is probably one of the most important. Ooh, the coal spawning here kind of screw... It doesn't ruin a national park. I can always unimprove the coal. It's just unfortunate that I have to. All right, plant woods... Plant woods, chop here. That'll be two turns off you. Adam Dobb should place its preserve to lock in its price. And also just so I don't accidentally like over or under plant trees in the wrong places and stuff. Oh, we found the Vatican City. That is huge. 
Vatican City is huge. We just got another 50 faith per turn. And if we can get suzerainty of the Vatican City, it should be another 50 on top of that. Yeah, that is a massive find is getting our hands on the Vatican City. We also have Rembrandt van Rijen, who is going to do me a favor and we could potentially theme. So let's look at great works of art theming. So I'm going to move these two sculptures over here in uh, Gordon Abutnot. So now we have room for three great works of art. We're working on it. Ooh, this portrait is actually worth three, four. So I'm going to move a portrait down here to slightly optimize, making sure that none of my things are duplicated. And I want to have, I always want to have three great works of art in my capital because it doubles the value of great works of art. Okay, perfect. We're almost breaking the 200 mark when it comes to great works. And Rembrandt has just come in from the top rope with more portraits. Uh, let's have a look at the previously recruited great people. We're going to look at great artists. Uh, this mo the mod that allows this, by the way, this setup is in my, um, should be in my mod link. Allows you to filter things. All right, one turn until we switch. Let's quickly switch to Reformed Church. We're going to make the switch next turn. Drop a builder. We got a ton of extra Diplo favor from that, which is nice. It wasn't completely necessary. It was nice. It was a nice bonus. Renaissance walls done here in Tula. Tula's a little bit behind in infrastructure, so I'm not going to make it work on things. I'll save that faith purchase. Yeah, naturalists cost 600 base. So a 15% discount is actually quite a big discount for them. I think I'm going to go for the theater square. More great work locations is awesome. Although that said, I do think the preserve will give the city the potential it needs to actually build those in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, let's kill the coal mine. We're going to harvest the deer and we'll build here. Reform church. Awesome. Theocracy. 50% uh, discount purchases on faith. Extra faith from holy site buildings. Uh, switch to theocracy. It doesn't change much of our government. We do plug scriptures up into here. Uh, we could use monarchic legacy. Um, but I think I'm going to go for Republican Legacy. Again, those eight amenities, really useful, pushing us up into that nine ecstatic cities. And it is necessary for that. We don't mind that we're in a normal age. What we could do is heartbeat of steam to try and guarantee a golden age in the next era. Uh, because if we build buildings like sewers, uh, any building from the industrial era will give us error score now. So things like sewers, right? That's plus two housing. The broadcast center, or broadcast center, that's plus one error score. The sewer, plus one error score. Literally anything that like is just past this line in the tech tree and also past this line in the culture tree, just, you know, error score, which is really, really nice. Let's go for mass media, ideology into suffrage. So in my opinion, democracy is the best tourism government because it is focused on allies plus food and production for allied trade routes. And you want to send international trade routes when you're going for a culture victory uh, because you get bonus tourism for sending international trade routes. And it also has the best card setup for a um, tourism victory because it has an emphasis on economic cards, which tend to have a lot of boosts to tourism. Um, try and find, yeah, 200% tourism from great works of music, 100% tourism from great works of art and artifacts. So quite good, right? And then it also has a wildcard boost, which allows you to use things like Republican Legacy, which can keep your, you know, yields and amenities fairly high. We are going to be building our wonders slightly slower in this government, which isn't the end of the world. Um, Gordon Abutnot has completed the builder. Uh, we could go for the bank. I think the move is the preserve. I've got two envoys to play around with. I'm going to put two more into the Vatican City. Look at this, 500 faith per turn. Boom, 588 faith per turn. Absolutely giga chad levels of faith. So obvious first place to get a naturalist is in the capital city. There is a very clear national park right there. Uh, I'm going to take this tile from the city of Brandon Tate, because if I get a naturalist in Brandon Tate, you can see it wants to put the national park in between the two national parks that I have planned. So if I swap this tile to Adam Dobb, it will move the national park to here. So that'll, that's kind of a way that you can move around your national parks is by changing which tiles are owned by which city. It's a very, very useful trick. Emmy Castagnier, we're gonna get a naturalist over there. We'll also get one in Cameron Holder and we'll get one in Dermody. Okay, that's gonna be our first round of naturalists that we purchase. All right, we harvest the deer and we'll plant a forest there for the appeal. Uh, we have an art museum completed. Let's work on that preserve. Plonk down the Agatha Bass and then you wanna build a great work over here for me. I get into the water. I, I, don't think, um, I don't think faith units can be killed if they're in the water. So it's actually a really good way to save them from aggression from other faith units if you embark them into the water. Good little trick there. There's mass media giving us access to the Broadway, which is a 20% culture boost, but we're kind of a little bit more interested in 
the actually just having places to put great works at this point. All right, National Park in the capital. Now, the really cool thing about this is you get four error score for the very first National Park, and then you get three for every single one of them afterwards. Also, a National Park gives one amenity to the city that it's in, and then one amenity to the four closest cities. So that is a five amenity swing we just got there. And we're going to see massive amounts of error score coming. We can finally tra trade with Gaul. And it looks like the trade route is going through Malgium. So I'm going to trade with, uh, let's see. I don't like that this goes through the, through the water. So I might just trade with Adwatica because it feels like a safer trade route in case there's like barbs in the water or something. Maybe I'm paranoid, maybe I'm crazy, but that's something I'm willing to own up to. Okay, you got a bunch of builders in here. Let's grab your preserves now. Now that we have conservation, we're going to move into preserves. We do have an empty policy slot, and this is a great time to plug in logistics. Fantastic time to plug in logistics and also military research for that little bit of extra science. I think we're basically done building builders, so we could probably pop out public works soon. I may... Uh, national Park right here. There's a plus three error score. Every National Park, by the way, is worth plus three error score. Just to just to remind you how based they are. We buy another naturalist in here. You're going to go ahead and place your National Park right there. Another three error score. Tourism should be exploding right now. National Park over here. Boom. Oh, look at that. You pop up to here. Boom. National Park. Pop over there. Oh, I forgot to get one in Zach Harvey. Oops. Pop one in here. Very nice. So I can start to delete some of these pins now and we'll get a little bit of a clearer view of what's left to do in my empire. So you can kind of see that as I delete these pins, we've already taken care of a significant number of the um, significant number of the possible places where, you know, they can be built. Still a bit of work to be done over here on the western side of my empire. I think purchasing like a builder from Brandon Tate maybe could fill us in there. Probably like two builders. We'll see. But we do have the gold for that if we need it. All right, naturalist move. Well, gold purchase a builder in here to be sent to the front lines of construction. This was an internal trader. It seems like it would still be necessary. So I'm going to pump it in because Tula is just really poor. It's really, really badly run. It'll need like four lumber mills over here just to keep it going. This whole area will be lumber mills. Uh, I guess this whole area here will be farms. I think that actually makes sense. So we could have a well-developed empire across a variety of dimensions. Boom, National Park, another three era score. We're up to nearly 300 tourism per turn. We've got 29 foreign tourists visiting my empire. I should probably give another explanation of how tourism works, right? That's something I explain all the damn time. But it's also something I don't really get tired of explaining. You know, the naturalist, delete these pins. Yeah, one thing I love to see as a player is like having this huge plan that I've, I've laid out the vision for my empire and then slowly but surely filling in every tile of that plan. So naturalist up here, boom. Um, we're gonna need at least two more in this area. Well, actually this one will handle over here. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, one thing I love about the national parks is how they kind of connect up their fences in a really satisfying way. This national park right here is ready. Let's get them. What's our national naturalists up to right now? 1,445. Pretty dying expensive, but completely manageable. I do want you to continue to build builders for me because I do need a few more. Oh yeah, look at that green carpet of delicious, delicious high appeal tiles. Okay, scientific theory. Plus one food from plantation, scorched earth. Uh, Jane Austen. All right, we want a natural park here. Let's pop the woods down. National park. Boom. Plus the era score. I don't even know if we have places for some of these great works. All right, Adam, you pop in here, naturalist. We could delete these. I think Adam Dobb has to take this one, which means I'm going to need another naturalist in this area. You need to finish that preserve. I need to get some builders down here, not only to give you production, but to also give you, to also give you national park stuff. Yes, 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 yes. All right, I'm sitting on two envoys. I'm gonna hold them. I don't have a reason to spend them. I don't have any scientific infrastructure, so improving my relationship with these guys wouldn't help. I don't have any military infrastructure nor need to build military infrastructure, so improving my relationship with Wola wouldn't help. No need to improve my relationship with Johannesburg beyond suzerainty. I'm already suzerain of Nan Madal. No need to improve that. Similarly, I already have two scientific city-states, both of which actually are quite good. The only other one that might be worth getting would be Anshan, if I could grab them. But I'm kind of hoping out. I'm holding on to my envoys in the hope that I find a second one of these. But 
if I can take the certainty of Anchan, I will, because it's a lot of science. Not that I need a lot of science, but my, my yields are insane right now. 177 science is on par or better than most AIs, and 300 culture is top culture. So I'd say we're doing pretty well. Persia's uh, culture is really, really strong. He's up to 150 domestic tourists because he is at a really healthy 144 culture per turn. So, you know, it's a, it's a process. Winning the game is a process. Right, let's go ahead and plant woods here. I had meant to actually not only plant woods, but also put a lumber mill. I'm trying to keep my units going. All right. Oh, wow. Uh, Hammurabi is like super mad at me. But I mean, he, he can stay mad as far as I'm concerned. Archaeologist completed. We're going to go ahead and see if we can't pick up a few of those. Delicious, delicious archaeological dig sites. Another national park planted. Uh, get up on that mountain. Harvest that tile. Pop. Oh, there's a strategic resource here that I haven't discovered. It's probably aluminum. Oh, no, it's a desert. I'm dumb. Never mind. <laughs> you can't plant forests on deserts. Of course. God. Uh, you know, look. Every now and again, we all have moments. Moments of forgetful stupidity. Uh, right. So I don't want to plant any lumber mills here because we are building a preserve. I don't think that would be intelligent or appropriate. I will go improve this coal if I can. Uh, improve lumber mill. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to get a national park in here. I mean, maybe. We'll see. It depends on if I can get the Eiffel Tower or not. Speaking of Eiffel Tower, I need to work towards that at some point. Uh, the big advantage of the Eiffel Tower is it gives plus two appeal to all of the tiles in your empire, which includes all of the national park tiles. And if I go ahead and do a search for national park, uh, and I guess Russia, just to be safe, we have 48 national park tiles, which would be 48 tourism times two, and then by our other tourism multipliers, that could end up being tons of tourism per turn. So super, super worth it for us to get the Eiffel Tower this turn, if we can manage. There we go, we got the Hermitage, which it must be built along a river and gives us a lot of room for extra great works of art. Also, isn't it just really, really satisfying to watch these wonders be built almost brick by brick? It's not quite brick by brick, but it is really satisfying. It kind of reminds me of the old Pharaoh games, where like you would build the monuments and they would slowly, it would slowly be built up over time. But the Hermitage, fantastic, great works of art slots. So what this does is this gives me a great work of art buffer zone, um, a place to store them efficiently where they don't interfere with my theming, which is truly, truly fantastic. So let's grab all the great works of art we can and plop them in here because the really, really awesome thing about um, great works of art in Wonders is you can actually have a great work of art from the same guy in a wonder and it does not matter. The building is so prestigious that the people who are visiting it don't care that technically it is um, art from the same guy. So this is a really, really great place to like drop your art as a buffer. But also it's a great place just to store it to get that extra tourism. Right? That's 20 extra tourism on top of the fact that this wonder itself produces three tourism per turn, which ain't bad. It's like its own great work. Uh, Hermitage is complete. I think we are going to go for the Broadway. It's only four turns more than the Bolshoi, and it's a 20% culture boost in the city. More importantly, it's another great work of writing and another great work of music slot in a city that benefits heavily from great work slot. Um, so we finished the preserve here in Gordon Arbutnot. Let's go ahead and get to work on the Grove, which will give us a small boost to our yields in this city. Uh, you know, I'm going I'm to gold purchase the Grove just so we can see these delicious, delicious tile yields. That's what's coming for us down the line when we can finish, like a lot of our empire will look incredible when it comes to tile yields. Um, and that's something I'm really, really, really looking forward to this game is just the sheer level of tile yieldage that I'll be able to pull off. Boom, boom. And so now this should be high enough appeal for a naturalist. I'm also gonna faith purchase a stupa in here because it's worth nine faith per turn, which is a hell of a lot. Yep, national park in there, excellent. And then we can start planting lumber mills. This is a choppable tile, which will get us the slightly faster to the walls. Seriously, I think people way underestimate how effective it is to make builders. Like look at the transformation that happened to my empire in just a few turns after research and conservation. Like with a plan, with a, um, with a plan, with the right game knowledge and with the right execution and prioritization of commands, we smashed out an insane, insane level of productivity here. Let's go ahead and build a mine right there. Okay, planting of woods. You got a builder. There's not really a good preserve in here. Mm. So continue to produce me a few extra builders just until I feel confident that I have the, all the builders that I need to finish my empire, uh, which is honestly just our main goal right now is to try and get all the tiles built. Plant woods, harvest there. That'll get the preserve done slightly faster. 
you plant the woods. Yeah, we need a few more build charts. Because don't forget, I still have to improve the mountains. Like, I haven't even researched democracy yet. I'm up over 420. Smoke trees every day. Uh, we're up over 420 tourism per turn. Right, let's grab excavate an artifact. Lovely. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get a Peter artifact. And I tell you what, before we really finish the total transformation of this empire, like, look at that appeal. Look at that appeal. It's just a carpet of green. There's a couple of splotches of orange and red where the um, where the thingies are. But dude, look at that transformation. Just a handful of turns. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to call that the end of the episode. I love you all very, very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.